Hello and welcome to Derek John Champney's Top Tens. I was born in 1969, so what a good way to start my Top Tens with my favourite films released in 1969. Number 10 is Easy Rider, a beautiful film taking us back to the days of peace and love and motorbikes. Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper are perfect in their roles, although the bikes are joint stars as well. Jack Nicholson, like you've never seen him before, brilliant music throughout, including Hendrix and Steppenwolf, that famous track Born to Be Wild. One film that just must be watched over and over again, a true classic for those who remember the era and those who want to find out what it was like to be there. Number 9, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. It is a British horror film directed by Terence Fisher for Hammer Film Productions and the cast includes Peter Cushing, Freddie Jones, Veronica Carlson and Simon Ward. The film is the fifth in a series of films that Hammer made about Dr Frankenstein and this strong entry ranks as the best film in the series with a strong cast, script and production. A must see for Hammer fans and horror fans in general. Number 8 we have Carry On Camping. Now I must admit I am not really a comedy fan but the Carry On series just does make us laugh. Carry On Camping is the 17th in the series of Carry On films to be made and it features the regulars Sid James, Kenneth Williams, Charles Hartley, Joan Sims, Terry Scott, Hattie Jakes and of course Barbara Windsor. Carry On Camping is easily one of the best in the series and is usually full of predictable and ever corny gags by the lovely team. Of course, one of the most famous scenes from any of the Carry On films is in this one, and it's where Barbara Windsor's bikini top flies off during her morning exercises. There is no real plot as such, it's just basically fun and games at the Paradise campsite with the best of the gang. Number 7, we have The Wild Bunch. This is a western directed by Sam Peckinpah about an aging outlaw gang on the Texas-Mexico border, trying to exist in the changing modern world of 1913. The film was controversial because of its graphic violence and its portrayal of crude men attempting to survive by any available means. The movie stars William Holden, Robert Ryan, Ernest Bergnein, Ben Johnson and Warren Oates. The Wild Bunch is noted for intricate multi-angle quick cut editing using normal and slow motion images, a revolutionary cinema technique in 1969, another must see. Night Cowboy is in at number 6 and it is an American drama film that stars John Voight and Dustin Hoffman. The film won three Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Director and Best Adapted Screenplay. It was the only X-rated film ever to win Best Picture though its rating has now since been changed down to a rated. Another one you need to check out. At 5, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This is a western directed by George Hill and written by William Golden who won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for this film. Based loosely on fact, the film tells the story of the Wild West outlaws Butch Cassidy and his partner, the Sundance Kid, who are on the run from a crack US posse after a string of train robberies. The film stars Paul Newman and Robert Redford, and eventually the pair and the Sundance Kid's lover eat a place, flee to Bolivia in search of a more successful criminal career, where they both meet their end. Cracking performance by both Newman and Redford make this an absolute classic. At four, we've got True Grit, which is another western, and this one was directed by Henry Hathaway and starred Kim Darby, John Wayne, who took the role as US Marshal Rooster Cogburn. John Wayne won his only Academy Award for his performance in this film and reprised his role in the 1975 sequel Rooster Cogburn. The cast also featured Glenn Campbell, Robert Duvall, Dennis Hopper, and the title song, sung by Campbell, was also Oscar nominated. This was remade years later, and although the remake is a good film on its own, it is not as good as this original. So if you want to see the best true grit check out the John Wayne one. Three we have Hannibal Brooks and this is a British war comedy film directed by Michael Winner. The film follows a prisoner of war who was attempts to escape from Nazi Germany to Switzerland during World War II. He is accompanied by an Asian elephant. It stars Oliver Reed, Michael G. Pollard. Brooks is a lance corporal who was put to work in the Munich Zoo looking after an Asian elephant called Lucy. When the zoo is bombed by the Americans, the zoo's director decides it's unsafe for the elephant to remain there, so he sends Brooks, along with hostile German soldier Kurt, a friendly German soldier named Willie, 
to accompany the elephant to Innsbruck Zoo via a train. Classic film, enjoyable by the whole family. Number two is The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. It's a British American drama based on the novel of the same name by Muriel Spark. The novel was turned into a play by J. Preston Allen that opened in London in 1966 with Vanessa Redgrave and on Broadway in 1968 with Zoe Caldwell in the title roles. Allen adapted her play into a film and Maggie Smith won the Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance in the title role. There was also a notable performance from Pamela Franklin as Sandy, from which she won the National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actress. The plot is basically a liberated young school teacher at Edinburgh's girls' school in the period between the two wars, instructs her girls on the ways of life, ignoring the more mundane subjects she teaches them of love, politics and art. Her affairs with two male teachers become known and she finds herself fighting to keep her job. She believes that she can always count on the 100% support of her favourite pupils. But one of them does not feel that Miss Jean Brodie is in her prime anymore. And no longer swayed by the teacher's eloquence, she begins to learn about life and love herself. This film was a film that I wouldn't have thought I would have enjoyed. But when I sat down to watch it, I was blown away by the performances and I thought it was an absolute cracking story. And that is why it got number two from my films that I've seen that were released in 1969. <laughs> At number one, we have On Her Majesty's Secret Service. This is the sixth film in the James Bond series and is based on the 1963 novel of the same name by Ian Fleming. Following the decision by Sean Connery to retire from the role after You Only Live Twice, Aeon Productions selected an unknown actor and model, George Lazenby, to play the part of James Bond. Lazenby decided that he would play the role of Bond only once. In the film, Bond faces Blofeld, played by Telly Savalas, who was planning to sterilise the world's food supply through a group of brainwashed angels of death, unless his demands are met for international amnesty for his previous crimes. Also, that the recognition of his title as the Count de Blochamp, the French form for Blofeld, and will be allowed to retire into private life. Along the way, Bond meets and falls in love and eventually marries Contessa Teresa di Vincenzo, who was played by Diana Rigg. This is the only Bond film to be directed by Peter R. Hunt, who was served as film editor and second unit director on previous films in the series. Along with producers Albert Roccoli and Harry Salzman, 
decided to produce a more realistic film that would have followed the novel more closely. It was shot in Switzerland, England and Portugal from October 1968 through to May 1969. Although Sean Connery is my favourite James Bond, this movie, out of all of the 007 films that have been made, is my ultimate James Bond film. I have hoped you've enjoyed this top 10 countdown of my favourite films from 1969. Please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and if you would like me to do any um, other top 10s that you can think of, please leave them in the comments section, and I will certainly do them for you. Thanks for watching.